Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I want to show you how to paint in the lemons for day four of Acrylic April. Can't believe it's day four. On the mic is John. Hey, you guys. He is going to be, well, my husband John, not just a general John, my just husband John. general John. <laughs> Hello. I represent Hello, John. all Johns. <laughs> To the rest of the world. Anyways, um, obviously beware of the world. It's like husband John. That'd be very strange. I've just, just blown her intro. That's okay. That's all right. It wasn't <laughs> going to be that good anyway. <laughs> so John is going to be tracking me with one of our four or five cameras. We got a few. Got a few. Making sure that you can see every part of the action. If you want to see the video where we grid in the lemons that is on the website, if you check the description There'll be a link that'll take you right to that page. There'll be printouts and all this extra help to really make sure that you really succeed at this project. You'll also see materials exchanges. And if you notice in the live chat, there will be butterflies. Those butterflies are your moderators. They'll help you find links and resources and make sure that your experience today is an awesome one. And it needs to be because we're in day four of Acrylic April, which has been amazing. And I'm ready to jump in. All right. Awkward intro aside. Because it's a lemony day. It's a little a bit sweet, a little right. bit sour. Let's do it. Woo. <laughs> so I'm actually super excited to be painting the lemons. Yeah. The lemons are exciting to me. Oh, darn it. What? I meant to write in the names of the paint. I'm sorry. I'll do it tomorrow, guys. Okay. But today, this is vermilion. You can exchange naphtha red or cad red medium for this. This here is cad yellow medium hue. You could exchange traditional CAD yellow medium, obviously, and also Hansi yellow medium would work really well. This is Naples yellow uh, in this paint line, but most paint lines will call it a nickel titanate yellow. Um, but you could use a Hansi yellow light if you can't find that. It would be just okay. I have titanium white, burnt sienna, phthalo green, primary blue, which you can exchange phthalo blue for, and Mars black, any black will work. So hopefully that gives you the info you need on the materials. We're on an eight by eight art panel here, a little artist panel board. I've got a gray background. Everything's gridded in and I'm ready to start painting on my daily painting journey. 30 days to being awesome. You, of course, already are awesome right now. Just, just so you guys know. Let me sip some coffee because clearly my energy levels are not high enough. <laughs> Need more coffee. Enjoy my unicorn horn. Magic, magic, magic. I, I'm I'm gonna look. I'm trying to go over here, get caught back up on get all of Get caught the... back up. Choo, choo, choo. Day's been busy. We've it got... has been a busy, busy day. I'm gonna kick it off today kick with it. the number eight Cambridge Bright. You're you could just use it. any bright you have, <laughs> but this is what I'm gonna be kicking it off with. Okay. And I think I'm going to be working out the background. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my primary blue with my Mars black, just kind of. Making this a deeper, cooler color, I think sometimes it's fun when you're doing very bright pieces. And I'm going to go right around these lemons because I'm going to paint them white. I am not going to actually kick off this off painting them yellow. Did you know that? No, I did not. You didn't know that? You did because you were literally there for the video when I talked about it. Maybe I was. <laughs> I can't promise I was totally paying attention, though. So if you're not aware of what this is, besides being a fantastic painting tutorial, it is also part of an art journey called Acrylic April, where every day um, artists will do a small daily painting in acrylic. I forget. I don't have to switch cameras. Yeah, it's, a, it's like it's almost like it's maybe dangerous. I just can walk away. Because you'll have now. free time for talking now. Really? I still have to kind of pay attention to what's going on over there. Sort of. Because <laughs> you... you, you you, it's such a small surface that mm -hmm. you uh, you have a tendency to just sort of go back and forth and move around it a lot more. Oh, you do know? I? Well, yeah, because it's it's a you have to work the angles differently than you do on a larger, you know, like even right now you're having to raise your shoulder up and get in a different position than you would normally. I've gotta watch that. It's really important to watch the positioning that you're in when you're painting because it's where um, you can end up finding yourself getting a little bit of injury little bit of problems in your health and well-being sports fatigue sports fatigue now while i'm at this let's go ahead and paint our little lemons letting this background have a dry see it just went popped all of a sudden you're like oh the lemons are don't leave me hair dryer i'll need you later 
Now to do the lemons, I'm going to just grab a different brush and I'm only grabbing a different brush because I want the white to be really white and I just use a lot of black and I'll have to vigorously rinse out that brush. So I'm going to get my number eight's cat's tongue. You could again use another bright. You just want to make sure that your brush is super, super clean and for speed I'm changing brushes, but not for particular artistic necessity, if that makes sense. It does. So Pippi was asking, Hi Pippi, how are you doing today? Why did you do, and I'm going to throw down a word here, use a colored ground or a painted background? So I use, whenever I'm painting loose, a colored ground because it allows me to be a little more expressive and immediate by making sure that my painting doesn't look unfinished. If like I'm doing like an open stroke, you can see little bits of the gray popping through, but it isn't putting a bunch of the white canvas through. So that helps my painting feel a little oh, more resolved. Well, like a, trying to adjust that camera. Yeah, bit. you can kind of see little bits of it there. Sometimes yeah, you can use a ground to actually play with color. So you'll use maybe your focal color on uh, some nice compliments and then they'll pop through and add a little drama. So there's a bunch of reasons to do it. And as you may have noticed, acrylic sticks to acrylic really well. I'm going to paint this here. So I'll be coming back with a little bit of my ground just refining my lemons you can really see that popping through there yeah. yeah and it's nice it's nice to have it's it's a technique it's not strictly necessary but very few things in art are strictly necessary there's usually just ways in and out of different designs okay this little fellow has a little bump out too i have that little bump out just so that i don't lose it madonna just threw some great advice in there do your stretches before painting. That is some good advice. I agree with that. That's some good advice. Very good advice. Um, one I did not take this morning, but I do think is a good idea to take. She did her coffee warm-ups. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. Sip, put down. Sip, put down. <laughs> Sip, put it's, down. <laughs> it's lift and stretch to put down. So I'm coming back and doing the lemons in white, and I didn't do them in the grid because I wanted to make sure that I talked to um, our broader audience about the idea if you're going to do a colored ground and you're going to have a very light focal object like a lemon where there's a lot of yellows or naturally transparent colors it's a good idea to come back and make those white again so that you don't lose the vibrancy if that makes sense some you. days some days actually it's making much more sense now that i've this acrylic april has helped me a lot has it helped you a lot I have in your uh, art journey? <laughs> I Surprisingly, yes. Surprisingly, I have learned some yes. things. I'm enjoying my art journey so much. Well, there's going to be a bunch of people that come out of this month very transformed. You know, and I'm going to be like, myself, what? Hmm? I'm, I'm not even doing the challenge. Like, I'm not working in acrylic day, every day. But I still, because I'm doing a daily challenge, it's there's a lot of interesting growth that's going along with that isn't there i feel like i'm feeling it even in myself um because i have my own unique challenges as a teacher doing this live having it be on youtube there's some other youtubers that are doing a lot like videos and lives and it's just a different it's a different challenge if you search the hashtag acrylic april on youtube on facebook on instagram you're going to find more than just me there's an entire community and it's our hope that the acrylic community is able to embrace this as a whole, as an event that they can celebrate their media, because I think our media is pretty awesome. Ooh, I'm going to get back into my background color just real quick, but more blue this time. Wonderful good question. Okay, I love wonderful good questions. What is the difference between a colored ground and an underpainting? So an underpainting generally is about getting the different elements or zones painted in, and so uh, sometimes you'll think of it as like a grisaille right? You'll go in and you'll do a tonal study and then you'll paint over it and there's an underpainting. Sometimes you'll block in fields of color and spatial stuff. And so there's just a little bit more detail. It happens in an underpainting, whereas a ground is about being able to come in and paint expressively as we are now. And you'll notice I'm now just working this blue, mm -hmm. uh, just a smidge of the black and I'm just working this blue here. I think this is going to be super dramatic and interesting and pretty. And that colored ground just also allows any of those thinner brush strokes to have that color pop through. Yeah, and gives us like a lot of room to be creative and playful. Um, 
paint a little more expressively or abstractly if we need to or want to. I wouldn't necessarily um, do one of those if I were painting like hyperrealism because that is a very meticulous process. But for what we're doing here, which is about catching zones and values, it's fantastic. I like this little blue here. You guys seeing that? It's just oh, really, yeah. I think it's going to really stand out with the lemons. Yep, and I'm just, just making almost like a loose halo. I'm randomizing my brush strokes. I'm still leaving that dark little halo of gray and you can, you know, inform it if you want to with a little bit coming back in of the darker value. See? Yep. There we go. Look at that. Amazing, dramatic, stunning background for day four. Bet I'm going to be like in a different stage by day 20. How <laughs> you doing, babe? Good. It's, you know, it's different. Um, only switching between the two primary zoom cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, I find myself looking for different things. It's, you know, I'm in a daily challenge too. Yeah. Yes, you are. It's very interesting. It is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else would really know what you're going through back there, like technologically. Um, thank you guys for the suggestions. If you're liking the new formatting, let us know. This was suggested by the group. I'm adding a little bit of my primary blue. I got to remember I'm going to call it primary blue to my burnt sienna to start this background here. So it's also going to be a little bit cool. Now, forgive me for my novice ponderings. And I'm going to paint all of this in. I'm totally going to let you novice ponder in just a second, but sure. we want to get some of this in. Yeah. I will completely allow you to do that because it's important to ponder things. But we want to come in here with this sort of brown and blue mixture. And I want to take it maybe a little more to the brown. So I'm just coming in and starting to create this little ground area. And I've got a lot more blue happening in it over here. But then as I come over, I'm going to start mixing stronger to the brown and less blue, if that makes sense. It does. And that's going to imply that perhaps that there's a little bit more light happening over here that's lighting the table more to the left side and a bit of shadow cast by our sack, which of course there is on the right side. All right, ponder away. So this is these colored grounds, when, when you're working with them, do they allow for you to do the, the, the color play so you can create tonal mm -hmm. and like that seems like a really interesting way to have like when you use the the magenta background the other day. Yes. That's what that was about is that you can then get peaks of magenta out and that's a pop of color that can be exciting visually in the painting. And it's something I like to play with. Sometimes it's super effective. Sometimes you're like, oh, it didn't work out. But it's always a nice skill to have in your toolbox. That's really cool. I'm going to switch out my water a little bit just because as I'm painting lighter colors and I'm doing different things, I want to have that vibrancy that I can play with for sure. I'm going like, to come put in a little bit of the sack. Hmm? I was going to say, they're passing along. They love the format. They're loving the format. That is super good to know. So I'm going to just take a brown and a little bit of my black. So that's going to be like kind of knocking that color back a bit graying it out, literally shading it, right? But in a minute, it's going to be a tone. I mean, yeah, a tone because I'm going to be adding white to it, which is essentially if you add black and white, which is gray, you're toning your paint. So that's where I'm going to find where that's at. If I have excess paint on my brush, I might wipe it off. And I'm going to come mix quite a lot of white into this. Just try to catch a little bit of this background or space. That I'm going to be speaking about. And you're going to be speaking about, aren't you? I am. This is quite a nice light value, how light or dark something is. And so it's fun to play with that a little bit as you're going. Playing with the value creates shape and form in your piece. So I'm going to come right here and catch a highlight that's coming in on the bag. And that's what I'm looking for is little, little highlights that are appearing maybe in the bag. 
so that I can start talking about those wrinkles and crinkles that are evident right here. See, I'm adding all those little highlights that I might be seeing. And then as I'm going, I can put a little more brown into it and even a little of my yellow. And I'm going to be darkening it. See how I'm getting in there? Yeah. I'm yep. going to just come in and darken it a bit. Lou had a question when you read, when you have a good time for one. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to be painting in the rest of this with this color right here, all the rest of the sack, and then I'll come back and add some shadows to it. What's up, Lou? Okay. So Luann said, is, is, Luann. Color, yeah, she said, says, Luann said, uh, is colored ground just paint or is it a different medium? Okay. So it is just paint where the drama is in the art world around colored ground is a lot of people teach colored ground as a wash and you can't do that with acrylic paint. You could thin oil and maybe do a wash. You can definitely thin a uh, watercolor and do a wash, but you would never want to thin acrylic paint to do a wash unless you were painting on a surface prepped for water effects or medias, or if it is paper. So on a can of like a surface, like an artboard, you wouldn't want to do that. I'm going to keep adding some values and some colors so I can <laughs> play with this here like you do. Sherpa detour deep into the art media. Got to answer the question. We have a lot of questions about grounds today. It is. It's, I th and I thought that was just kind of like, yeah, that's um, good. You know who I like for that, who speaks on that in a very informed way? There is an artist. She's a very serious studio artist named Michelle Thurberg. And she does have some YouTube videos. And she, she's really informed on her paint media. You know, and that is not necessarily something we always necessarily get from YouTubers, but she definitely is. Now, when you say studio artist, you mean uh, an artist who spends full time mm -hmm. work in their studio like a job. Like a job exhibiting and selling her work and her fine art, her journey is all about that experience of creating collections, showing collections, uh, cultivating collectors and that's She's definitely all in there yeah. i'm coming in here and i'm looking for these shadows and it's so important to catch the shadows uh when we're going i'm sorry i'm interrupting y'all we're just oh. all these like short time frames during our uh during our paints together and i want to try to one concentrate uh on what i'm doing a little bit and also make sure that you guys are getting your instruction so i'm not interrupting <laughs> <laughs> Even though I am. <laughs> I'm going to come here and We're, definitely maybe pop up these values a bit. And this is what I'm going to be playing with. A titch on my little sack here is trying to come and find those spaces where a little more black into it. Because this is quite a dramatic little space right here. There we go. Maybe a little bit darker. And I want my drama. You want your drama? I don't know. I want my drama. You're just adding a little little shadow in there? Yeah, I'm trying to, one of the things that's, uh, you know, I'm trying to do is see the crinkles and folds of the fabric and represent those uh, with my value steps here. And really see those and pop that contrast up. In the, uh, inside the bag, we're definitely going to add a lot more black. Because we're talking about those deeper shadows. I just dipped in water to improve the flow off my brush. So I can come here and sort of show some of that deeper value inside. That will help create some form and, and space. A little bit darker under here. And then this actually has this. Got to come back and get this. I think I got to add that. I'm going to deepen that right here, looking at it in a more reflective way. Try to find the shape of my sack, which I really haven't found yet. And that's what I'm completely looking for. So back into my yellow, I'm going to bring a little of my yellow into my brown. You know, it'll pick up some of the black. This is kind of where we're playing into our, our little sack, sackish color here. And I'm going to come back with quite a light value 
see if I can find everything again with maybe my lighter highlights. Now, so, if you weren't limiting yourself on time, you know, would would you where would you say this painting falls on that on your level of one to three difficulty? Um, I would say the month is uh, right around the two hoot difficulty range. The only reason it's a lot easier is because there's so much support material. Like there's a lot of support material, so you're not really expected to know certain things. And so it did manage to lower our rating a little bit, which was nice. Lower your hoot rating? Yeah. Difficulty rating? Yeah. But, I mean, if you've never, never painted before, the journey is going to feel one way to you than if you've painted maybe 10 paintings. So just realize that if you're catching up on not having done your first 10 paintings, then you might feel some of this journey a little bit more. Not that you can't do it. You absolutely can. And it will shorten the growth of your um, art journey quite a bit. Okay, let's feel like there's a little bit of a highlight here. And then interesting little space right there coming in. Oh, there we are. We're seeing it. I love seeing how some of you guys added the bubbles to the um the coffee the other day i thought that was super duper cool okay so there's this here and it kind of comes back yeah it kind of weeks back mm -hmm. trying to catch that really interesting wrinkle in the sack. Got this. and then there's a bit more pop right there of a highlight that's happening right here some here so that's what i'm trying to do is just see the wrinkles in my in my wrinkly little sack find your wrinkles highlight the highlights give her shadows where there's shadows just try to see what you've got if you've got to come into where you've got some value differences like here i have a really interesting little element with this fold that i've got to talk about it's like Bit of a challenge. There we go. I see it. Now we can start to see that fold. Warming that up. Always interesting. A nice warm base you can see i used a lot more yellow and if we remember we did the um, color wheel what do warm colors do they come forward that's a way that we can pull elements of our sack out so that they feel a little more sackish are you feeling sackish yeah and that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to create that Sackish notion. Now, interestingly, there's a bit of the yellow reflecting into the sack right there that I think I want to kind of capture. It's muted, of course, because it's in the sack. And I'm nine now. But I think it'll be lovely to show that bit of a glow right there. You see that glow where the lemon has reflected up into the sack? Yeah. I definitely want to paint that. You know, I've got a bit of the red on the front on the on the space. And I want to maybe kind of get into that a bit. I'm going to be kind of a trip here and come in with some of this red value. Loosely. I'm trying to capture things I'm seeing. You want a little orange there? So you see that picks up that value. It's been really interesting to work with the vermilion over my traditional cad red medium. Sorry, I, keep, I, I know I'm just like in teach zone. No, no, it's good. I don't need to switch back to the camera anymore. All right, I've just added some black. I just want to make sure that this, this background that we've got going on feels one level. Y'all know that's my nemesis. 
I'll go ahead and just paint that leaf out and put it back in. I think that's going to be easiest on me. Sometimes I can't easily uh, maintain everything. All right, so that's interesting. I like that. Just change those value sets a bit. Rinse that out. Now, I like to think about when I'm trying to figure out what to paint, when to paint it, about the layering of objects. And I'm going to come and get some of these leaves in now, even though I have some forward leaves, just because these are more to the back. And so it's a good time to put them in. So the first mix of my leaves, I'm going to take a little bit of my primary blue into my phthalo green and add a small amount of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to come here. I'm not doing this weird little leaf right there. I didn't feel like it added to the composition, but I do think I want to come in and talk a little bit about these leaves back here. So this is the first one I'm kind of painting in. And it's a real aqua color that I have right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow. And I'll come along this little edge here. A little bit of that tip there. A little warmer yellow. Now in half of this leaf, has some interesting stuff going on. So I'm just trying to pop this in. I'll wipe off there. I want it to be slightly deeper in the base. So you see I just took my green and my brown. I come there. I feel like this fellow would be a good one to paint in next because it's it's very deep. Take that deep color really into that crevice. You guys see the deep color? Yeah. And I'm gonna bring it up on the top of this leaf. That we have here. And then there's a corner leaf that's sort of coming out. And the center of it is a bit of that darker space. So we've got our deep values that we're thinking about. Add a little more green into this. Come get my yellow here as I'm brightening it up. on that edge. Bring that right there. So I'm trying to find my little highlights. The lower part of this leaf is a bit brighter. There we go. All right. Much brighter right there. Bring some of that back in that leaf. So that's that first little cluster that we're starting to see. I'm rinsed out. I'm going to come get a lot more of my yellow. And I may even pop a little white into it. And you can see that's quite bright. I'll come along this little edge. Make some little leaf reflections right there. Along his little friend's edge. Maybe some right here where this leaf has been up. Just add some of those values. A little white. Playing with the value spaces on our little leaf. that right there. So those are starting to to be a thing. Interestingly enough, the next one is you're going to make quite a bright orange. Yeah, we're doing. Yeah. And you can come into that bright green that you have and mix those together and it is going to make a very interesting and often used leaf color. And you wouldn't always think to put orange into your leaves, but believe it or not, they often have it. You 
you know, as you come through the fall, you'll start to see it, obviously. But anytime leaves die back, they start to run into those warm browns and cool colors. So being able to mix that in there is very, very helpful. I'm going to pop a little of it there. How are we doing? Maybe a little bit at the tip. Little deeper into the value set. There we go. See, I went and got some green. So it's darker. I get some of my just phthalo green. Pop that in there. Playing with all that. And I feel like that our orange with our titch of green. And we can come in and add a little lightning value to that. Talk about how that's folded over. And if we're not seeing it, you just get you just get the darker sense of it going. There we're opening and folding that leaf out. Yeah. We're just trying to talk about that folded leaf. So we'll let those have a little bit of a rest for a second. They need a rest, man. <laughs> They're super stressed out and they need a rest. And I'm gonna come get my dark value green again and talk a little bit about some of what I'm actually seeing here. So there is a line up. And there is an interesting little leaf here in the background. You can always come in and talk a bit about you know, lighter value set. Top, there we go. Underside of a leaf right here. And then I know I've got some forward facing leaves, but at least I have those kind of in there and some on the inside here. You can kind of see those. Get my yellow. Pop that contrast just a bit up top. It's a little dry. I mean, a little wet, so it's not doing that for me. So I have to let that rest longer, rinse out. So I no, no, no. That at least that's going to be dry when I come back to it. Because I'll need to do some like little focal moments. Now, my lemons, I'm going to take a little bit of my red into my yellow and start to talk about what is going on with these lovely lemons a little red into my yellow yeah it's like oh like a yellow orange it's a it's a yellow biased red tertiary color right there if we ever had one <laughs> <sighs> there we go. Just getting that basis in. That first bright. And you can see how not letting them be over the gray has helped me a little bit in keeping that bright. And we want these to be bright. It's important. Come up over the lemon, make sure that's got a nice shape. Make sure that's got a nice shape. That's important. All right, so 
little field of yellow. Now we have some shadows in this. We've got our yellow, and a smidge of our red, and we've got some shadows. So there's some ways we can get to the shadows. We can shade it with black. If we don't like to add black to our colors because they can dull them a bit, depending on biases, we could go to a complement and use like a green. I'll try with that. I'm gonna come in and get a little green. And I would need to add more of the vermilion to get the gray color. And what I'm doing is sometimes I'll put a color on my reference photo to see if it's in a close value range, if it's something. I realized I just got super quiet. That's okay. I'm teaching. I well, I think that's what it was. I was like, oh god, I was like, you were like, I'm in a, I'm in like a teaching fury. I am. Well, I think on these we're in a little more of a teaching fury just because our time constraints. You're saying that you're feeling nervous. That you'll that you're at 35 minutes. <laughs> I didn't know until now. So <laughs> now I, I am. I wasn't feeling nervous until you mentioned it. <laughs> Until you went there. So that definitely gives us some value in our lemons. Right? That definitely can increase that depth. I am going to sit there and see what happens if I see that gray is it a lot, but it might have a value for us here as well in a couple of places. I think the, the way that the sack is coming together is actually really cool. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I'm going to come right here. So this is a very yellow gray. Just make sure that these have that depth of shadow that we would be wanting to talk about. There. Okay. So like this, I'm pulling that shadow there. There we go. And Come along the tip of the lemon and make sure that we're shading that shape so that it starts to become the tip of the lemon. The end. Let's put this right here so we've got a nice shadow there. A little bit right here because the sack's in shadow. And we'll let those have a, a, a moment of rest. Moment of rest. While we come down here and talk a little bit about these lemons again. So my yellow, smidge of my red, make that biased yellow. And I'll get that first layer in there. And what I may do. Because even though it's very hot in my studio today, the paint isn't drying as quickly as it usually does. Which sometimes I love, like if I'm doing portraits or something, but if I'm trying to paint like fast, the paint not drying can hinder me. That's probably because it's been raining pretty heavily. Yes. So you have all kinds of factors that dry out your paint. One of them is the um, temperature, but more importantly than anything, relative. on the dry out is the humidity. Yeah, the relative humidity. Yeah. So. So we're a humid day today. Super humid. And my paint's like, I don't know how to dry out at all. It's because it can't. It, <laughs> it, it, it says to, no, man. It goes to breathe in and it's just more water. Now I'm going to come back to my background shadow, which was my black and blue, if you remember. Right? Get quite a lot of that mixed up. Dip in there so it has a nice flow off my brush. I'm going to come under my sack. Just very carefully talk about this shadow that's going off the picture frame. So the number one thing that we can do to improve our art, me included, always, all of us, always, is to have a better sense of value. That's how light or dark something is. And so these exercises help us refine our personal insights into those values.
Now, does it help when you get to see those shadows? And we get these deep values worked out. Does it help things start to have form and space and shape? Right. Believe it or not, there's quite a deep value between these two little fellows right here. And I don't want to not talk about those. And therefore lose the right to separate out their space. So let me dry just to make sure everything's dry. It's a good time to change water if your water's dirty. Sip some coffee. I can take some questions All right. um, after I drive. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I will look for questions. Okay. All right. Okay. So while uh, I'm doing that, I'm going to say thank you guys for coming and hanging out. We really love you guys coming in and joining us for Acrylic April. Um, this has been a great experiment uh, Cinnamon put together where she wanted to just sort of have a celebration of the medium and and the media and uh to, you know share that with you guys so thank you for coming and joining us i'm gonna flip it we're gonna flip i'm gonna oh, flip that oh, way that way yeah uh, sip my coffee oh no i don't have to you can okay i'm ready anytime i think i can go oh hey there you are you're over there learning right. already so now i get to look at that kind of starting to take shape there's definitely lemons in there. There's lemons in there. So, <sighs> oh my gosh, there's so much lovely feedback in here. Everyone everyone says that they love the new format. They've got a couple of ideas for me to change some things around. I'm going to make the palette bigger next time and the study a little smaller. I think the reason that we had done that is a lot of folks didn't have access to a printer. Mm -hmm. And so that's it. It was We're their only reference. Where can they find the reference materials you put together? If you check the description below, there's a link to our website. And you can usually find a video because we have over 900 art lessons. You weren't aware. We have over 900. You can search by keyword on our website. You can go to our calendar and click calendar events and go to events. You can go to our video lessons and just see how things are queued up. I think this one is skewed back three pages right now. Who knows? By the time you watch it in the future, 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 where it'll be, but you would search lemons or acrylic April if you want to know all the acrylic April. And all of these are in a playlist, but just the description below and you go there and on the side is a ton of printouts and you can print out your reference in black and white or in color or gridded or your worksheet. And they were asking how about the store, the acrylic April store. Well, it's the art service store, but I have some acrylic April merch. You do. I do. So, I have garb. I have the garb, garb. of April. Now they were. So if you needed were, leggings that that said acrylic April. Now a lot of the folks who are <laughs> who are not able to necessarily do acrylic April right now with us. Yeah, they can just do it later. They, they were saying that like they have to finish this month up. Maybe next month start it, or maybe even October, November. They're thinking yeah. they may do it. Now, are you going to leave the garb up so that if they complete Acrylic April later, yes. they can come back and get it? Yes. Actually, there's going to be an end of event special collection I'm putting together. Okay. That basically celebrates that you did it. You did it. You completed the journey. And then, um, yeah, that will all be up. Now, next year, we may change this stuff. It, there'll be new designs every year. But you'll, be, you'll have access to this stuff. So if you complete it any time this year, you can have access to it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I think... You know, <laughs> that wasn't a plan we had, but I'm willing to go for it. It's probably where we're going to go. <laughs> We've It has evolved. I will get back in my lemons. I'm ready. Okay. So I've got my fresh water out. I'm going to put out some more of the yellow. Now, some people were saying they had trouble with these pouches um, kind of exploding out. And I'm having to wonder how that's happening because I haven't had that happen yet. But whenever you're squeezing paint of any kind from a tube or a pouch, you have to be aware of the pressure that you're applying. There could always be an air bubble in there. So squeeze with a slow and steady pressure until you start getting the paint out. Is my two cents on how you might address that problem. Now. As you might want to. Good question. Mm. You know what? There, all the questions came in after. Okay. We had our little pond. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you're going to upgrade just one color first. White. I knew that you're going to say. Can you explain why? Because um, the white, the differences between the cheap white and the expensive white are substantial. And you'll use twice as much white as any other color in your palette. It will impact how things lighten. It will impact how they tint tone, shade, every, no, not shade, tint tone. It um, will help you with like how bright certain spots of your canvas are. A good titanium white, like if you have all kind of mid-grade paints and then one good titanium white will take you further. It was very tempting to do that for this. I am doing fine though, but that would be my, my first one to go for the upgrades. Because you got to get the upgrades. I'm going to give yeah. an art high five to Ian Jackson. Hi, Ian Jackson. Ian Jackson is doing the journey with us. He says, acrylic April, not just for April, it's for life. <laughs> he shares my, my distrust of Ewoks. <laughs> Dude, so I went ahead and made my, <laughs> my uh, kind of uh, red biased yellow again. But no, we do. We share that. Don't start no Ewokness. No, I'm just saying. We both know. All right, so I'm coming here, and I'm just adding this next layer. I really, really want this to be super vibrant. So I'm going to take that extra step. I may be a little over my time goal today, but not much. You're okay. So just because I'm, one, I need the yellow today. I don't know if you've ever had a day where you're painting color, and you're like, man, I need this color today. Like, I need it. You've got a bonus five, min five minutes for mentioning Ewoks. Do I? Five minutes? <laughs> what? <laughs> when did this game start? All right, I'm going to get a little more of my red. Just a little more. As I keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and just make sure. So this is just a slightly brighter uh, yellow. I hope you can see. But it still has a bit of that red bias to it. So we're just getting those. Now, this lemon reflects up into this lemon, so I'm going to talk about that reflection there. Did not do that lovely. And then the top of you will be brightening up quite a lot. And then I want to make sure that this is brightened up here. I'm just trying to keep our lemons having a good shape, a good lemony shape. And that good lemony feel as they shape in. We got it. These are actually a, um, in the reference, it's funny, on my printer, they came out really biased orange, but I'm seeing in your reference, they're really biased green. What's also, what's interesting is like, eh? so the cameras are really well balanced, but watch what happens as biased I zoom orange. in. Biased orange. As I zoom in and out. Yeah. The color uh, that sh shows up, is very different. Strongly, like you'll see it shows more orange as uh especially depending on how the ca how it's tilted and it's picking up more or less of the light. And so it's this is some very subtle shifts to the color depending on the, how the light hits it. And yeah, this is why I like looking at paintings in a museum. <laughs> it does help. I'm adding a very dark green kind of here to the background to sort of frame these lemons. I just want that there. I'm going to come back in now that my uh, top uh, leaves are dry and add a very dark green again to some of them just to pop them and create some contrast issues so that they stand out from one another, as you can see I'm doing. Just want a little bit of that bigger drama. What do you do? Bigger drama. Let's take a little bit of our yellow and our blue and we can make a really nice green gold right here. So you think you are finding your daily groove a little more today? I think I am finding it more. Uh, it really broke for me at the coffee cup. Yeah? Yeah, I, I really felt it at the coffee cup, and now I'm starting to find it here where I'm like, yeah, I know where I'm going, and I like what I'm doing. And well, That's good, because this is uh, your show. It helps. <laughs> I've just got those little touches there. I like those. Those little fun touches of happiness and joy. 
All right, so we get to shade our lemons again. So our lemon, our pretty lemon. So we'll take our yellow and a little bit of our smidge of our vermilion, the red that we have. And we'll also go ahead and I am back with the green like we did before. That's grayed out, right? Mm -hmm. Mix that right in there. Now you're leaving these very brushy or these are loose. The loose, whole goal yeah. is to to have them be a little bit loose, a little bit expressive. Um not necessarily, you know, capture everything. I'm gonna take a shadow across the top here because he's gonna have a leaf that casts a shadow. And I'm going to definitely bring this little bit of shadow around. The shadow's yeah. going. This little fellow has a shadow. He's an interesting little shadow and kind of a navel here, so I've got to think about that. Always fun to come back and refine the shadows on our little lemons. Thinking about where they are and where they're going. Getting there. Now, more yellow. Some pure yellow. And I'm going to start putting a little white into it. Come to the top here. Maybe a little bit at the top of this little part of him. Let's definitely add that bright little spot up there. I've got to put a little seedling there. Now this has a bit of that, but not everywhere because these guys have shadows. Oh, I'm starting to like it. I still feel like there's some stuff there I'm not as into. So I'm going to take my blue, interestingly enough. I'm going to come along here. Just make sure that this is... You're doing some painting contortionism there. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. I just... I <laughs> no, no, I got to remember posture. to not, not do that. Yeah, because your posture can affect how you paint long term that way, right? Yeah, and it could, it could make it harder for me to complete the months. That's why John is reminding me is because he knows. You see how I'm using the blue? To kind of make some shadowing there that's deeper. And that's sort of fun. Do that right here, maybe between them and then I may even take some of this blue here where this has got a darker little shadow and down across this bottom and then let's uh come here and be like there's this little belly button thingy he's got you call it that and I did it with just the blue right now I'll get to it in a second. I just like that. We're getting to the end. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Got some leaves and some stuff to do, but I'm like seeing it. I'm going to just go ahead and like treat myself to this particular Naples yellow. If you have a Band-Aid yellow, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily here, but it would still work. But if you have the nickel tighten it one, I definitely think it will be pretty fantastic because the pure pigment will just stand out. Okay? How that does. Yeah. Go ahead and put a little right there. I like doing these little reflections. And they're different than hitting it with just white, though. I will hit it with some white, but it gives some different space in our mind's eye to be thinking about. Let me just pop that little bit of a highlight there. I've been loving seeing your paintings. You guys are amazing. Uh, I went and made sure I gave some love to the uh, Curly April page on Facebook. I've definitely been trying to go by and give lots of love to the group. It's just amazing, like right after the show, how many of you guys are keeping up and painting with me like the whole time. That's like amazing to me. I'm going to just add a little of this to here because I know I've got the... And then definitely right up here at this little shoulder.
maybe a little bit of this orange and yellow and I might come back here and exaggerate that reflection. But I'm also going to come back with just a little bit of the blue. That's the primary blue. And exaggerate a little bit of that delineation. See how we're doing with just the, the pop? I'll take some of that here. Fun. I like to make those little, little drama moments. Those little spaces so there's this fabulous shadow and i'm going to actually stick with the blue i'm liking this even though it's doing some interesting things and i'm going to come over the top and it comes over and it goes down that might be a little bit too green to make it stand out so i'll go ahead and get a little of my black and my yellow and make the black and yellow kind of shadow that we had there we go Great. So, so it just is reading a little more shadowy and a little less leaf because it isn't a leaf at all. It is the shadow that the leaf is casting over everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and get my green, a bit of my yellow, and let's just talk about this big leaf right here, casting the shadow. And then his little friend, yeah, that's like a more forward leaf, that's casting the second shadow. Yeah, I could, but nah. Go ahead and add that right there. I'll get to them in a second. I've got to make a very bright pop so that these sort of stand out. And I'll have to do some reflections to pull them from, you know, where they're at. But I got the basic little shapes. I'm going to come back with that. There we go. Yeah, let's get those shadows in. Just keep working that little shadow. So while this is having a little bit of a dry, and I may have to dry it later, I've got to pop some reflections here and there. And to do that, I'm going to make sure my canvas is dry. We are almost, almost to the end. All right. There we go. Right, quick button. So while she's drying that, I'll say remember to keep your surface uh, at low heat. Um, any heat can help in, can induce color shift. Um, especially in student paints. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, it just can cause them a little bit of shift. So if you keep it on low heat, that won't be a problem. I'm going to say thank you for guys joining us. And look, Cinnamon's back. I'm back. Oh, I'm sort of loving this. I love it too. It came together really, really fast. It is pulling together. Now I might switch to my round just to give myself some control. This is a number four round. And I'm going to definitely go ahead and, and get into my white for a second. And in the center of this hot spot that I did with the uh, Naples, I'll go ahead and add a couple little even hotter reflections. That means that those are just read brighter to the camera. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Fun stuff. All right here and add some. Really actually enjoying that I got to paint a bag of women. You know, uh, it's fun to just have a reason to paint sometimes. I really like how the lemons have come to be. Isn't that great? They've just sort of rolled out. They're just like, ah, be lemony. Ah, be lemony. They're stepping out. They're like, I am a lemon. I'm adding a little touch of that yellow there so that pops out as a stem. You know? And definitely, definitely, I need to get into here and get some bright, bright. Along this leaf. Talk about some of that high reflection. Just creating these little spaces of highlight that are going to be sort of fun. 
if I need to get into my white and even give this just one more value raise because I'm trying to pop it from its base. And then this one has a few right here. I see that are happening. Little one back there. Little brown and the green. And again, I'm just on my number four rounds. So it's giving me a little bit of control. I am in no way trying to be too detailed. I'm just trying to capture some of the shape and form some of these objects. If that makes sense. And it can help to get something that you're like, oh, I really like this one or oh, this one's really doing it for me. I love that there's this sort of shine to these forward leaves. So I definitely want to talk about that a bit. You guys see the shine on the forward leaves? Yeah. Oh, there we go. We got some shine going on this forward. Forward little, little leaves. Get some of my just pure yellow. And I'm gonna come through and make sure that that we've got some just almost an exaggeration of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Pop those lemons out. We painted lemons. Yeah. Sign those lemons. Sign the lemons. Sign the lemons. I was just over here. People are very impressed. With? Everything you're doing here. This is looking so really great. <laughs> I'm very glad. It, the idea of this was like kind of a crazy one. And then, you know, you initially think of it and you're like, oh, I'll just, you know, put it up there and, you know, everyone will. Do what they're going to do. And then you think, oh, no, I should do it with everybody. And then you go, oh, was I thinking a good thought? I challenge myself to a daily painting. You know what? We all need them. And I was noticing that I needed a tune-up. This is, this is what I consider an art tune-up. And it? it just helps me get back into that space, even though we're doing this together, even though I'm still teaching. It's also helping me get back into my own space. And I imagine that the work I will be doing after this month will level back up again. And there will never be a time in my life that I don't just stop and work on my craft. And will there hmm? ever be a time that you stop and hammer time? Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't have time for hammer time? Let's turn around and say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. See, it looks so good. It's a lemon and lemons. <laughs> Get lemon out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am so into this lately. I got some lemon jewelry and a lemon dress. <laughs> and I'm like, only the lemons. So, been very fascinated with lemons and citrus just in general lately. I don't know what's going on with that. I love seeing what you guys are doing. I love the support that I'm seeing between people that are on the journey. I've been enjoying seeing the original projects that are getting done. I've been enjoying seeing the stuff that's happening. Uh, with my mom, I've been enjoying seeing the stuff that's happening with Stephanie and Mary Atelier and the different creators, Mark, just so many people, Mona, Chrissy even made a video for us. So it's been really great to see the love and support out there. Um, I'm going to keep combing the internets looking for you guys. Be good to yourselves, right? It's not about each individual painting. It's collectively about what you're getting out of the process and the experience and how it's transforming you on the inside. Be good to each other. You never know what somebody else is struggling with. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. In fact, tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.
end screen. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Everyone's still listening. They're like, end screen. <laughs> Yay! 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 <laughs> end screen. We got it right, <laughs> Sherpa. <laughs> Love you. I love you too. They, they can see you. Do do do. Hi. Bye bye. <laughs>